Hey, One Another Couples, welcome back. This is One Another Marriage with Dr. David and Teresa Mabry. <laughs> Did you forget our last <laughs> name all of a sudden? Who is she over there? Who is that woman oh, over there? Oh, that's right. That's Dr. David. And hey, this is why we have our podcast. Do you know why? Why? Because we wish to strengthen marriages so that they may have greater satisfaction and impact on the world around them. An impact on the world around them, really, um, we hope that you all can not only influence one another in a positive way, but also to impact your children, Mm -hmm. um, family members, uh, friends, and neighbors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Interestingly enough, our topic for today. (laughs) Our topic for today is about friendship with other couples and why that is so important. And so we're going to be unpacking from our perspective, um, our, our years of friendship that we have had with, uh, several different couples and how that came about, why we feel it's important and possibly giving you some, um, just some little bit of extra advice as to why that is so vital um, for your marriage. Mm-hmm. Before you skip out uh, and think, you know, I don't know if I need to hear anything about friendship. <laughs> it's a pretty, uh, pretty important topic. Important for your marital health. Absolutely. To have healthy relationships outside of your your marriage, mm-hmm. whatever that may look like. Right, and we're talking, we're we're talking specifically about having friendship with other couples. Mm-hmm. It it's also important to have friendship with other individuals. So yes. you have you yes. have some friends, I have some friends, but then we also have mm-hmm. um some core people that as mm-hmm. couples we have had shared friendship over the years as well. That's right. So that's yeah. right. So but, all right. Yeah. I get to do the puzzle this week. Puzzle. And I ha- <laughs> There it is. I knew it. There it is, ladies I knew and gentlemen. It. You know, folks, so uh I before couldn't. I pushed record, uh <laughs> Teresa Mabry was uh, I knew today was going to be a day that mm-hmm. she gets uh, hums a tune mm-hmm. or sings a tune during mm-hmm. our podcast, and I could you, hum in the background while you talk. D- uh, that would be <laughs> fabulous. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, no, you can you can't control it. You can only hope to contain it. I know. So you can't control this. That's right. You can't stop it. Maybe that's the better phrase. You can't da, stop na, it. Na, na. Can't Can't. stop this. That's not the song. I know, but it just kind of went with the. That is not the song. I know it's not the song. Okay. Can't touch this, but (laughs) it just went with can't stop this. Okay, so can I do my puzzle now? Puzzles. Puzzles, remember, um, if it's your first time joining us, uh, puzzles are something that we share every podcast episode, and it's just one simple way to connect as Mm -hmm. a couple. Um, the puzzles should never be about your spouse, mm-hmm. but they are just those things that you just kind of think about, and sometimes you just don't always have the opportunity to share. Yeah, and we want to give so, a broad definition for that, right? Because right. we never want, to, hey, one another couples, don't don't put these um, rules, suggestions into a legal legalistic uh, framework. Mm-hmm. So feel free to, and today's puzzle is going to fall into that loose kind of broad puzzle category because I actually, I think I'm going to bring a solution with my puzzle. (laughs) Okay. Like I, I understand why, but it's more of something just to share. Okay. And, and I think I know why. So it's a puzzle that's kind of solved. So here's the deal. Gotcha. Is that I'm ready. I have a, I have a chipmunk issue in (laughs) in my backyard. (laughs) So, so I guess this is a puzzle for you, Teresa, (laughs) is that I'm, I am amazed. Yeah. At the number of chipmunks we have in our backyard, and especially around the deck and around the shed. The spring and summer. The spring and summer so far. Yeah. And I've, um, I work at um, removing chipmunks from our property. (laughs) Trying to, yeah. And I will not say how. Yeah. Uh, We have some traps, yes. Yep, I get rid of those little rascals. Right. And, um, And I suspect because I've also recently in my chipmunk uh trap mm-hmm. it's a little, little cage thing mm-hmm. they go in and i i treat them with a little peanut butter <laughs> and you apple have, you have 
apple, you have cut up apple slices in a Ziploc bag in the refrigerator. <sighs> and when I open up the refrigerator, I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, oh, no. Those are the ones for the track. Actually, so interestingly enough, is that ta- Taylor, our daughter, was <laughs> over and she, she almost... pulled them out of the fridge <laughs> and she was getting a little snack. And I said, Taylor, you don't want to eat this because those belong to Chip and Dale. That's they, right. They belong to our uh, Chip Alvin, friends. Simon, and Theodore out there. <laughs> Thank All you right. very much. Very good. And so they, um, uh, there, I, it just struck me too that there are no other famous chipmunks to call upon <laughs> in names. <laughs> Like, and even then, not everyone's going to get it. But I know. Uh, so here's here's my thing. Okay. So I trap these little little guys mm-hmm. and uh, and girls and mm-hmm. yes <laughs> they. Uh, but I also caught a field mouse mm-hmm. in the chipmunk cage. So yes. it, was a, it was amazing because it's a little large for that. So here's here's what I suspect, honey, mm-hmm. is that I think is what happened. Um, how long has, um. God rest her soul. Uh, <laughs> Gravy the cat been gone. Oh yeah, um, it was last May. There yes, you have it. So a year. There right. you have it. And what happened? My chipmunk population. Our. I'm uh, sorry. Our, yeah. We own it. Our chipmunk population has gone up yes. last summer, and now spring and summer. Now, right? So is Gravy, by the way, folks, was a it, it was an outdoor cat for us, and, and she so, was a great outdoor cat that hunted. Oh yeah, and she's she a, she was a good mouser. She's a mouser. She wasn't just like a fluff and stuff outdoor cat that mm-hmm. was like afraid of her shadow. Mm-hmm. She was on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right because like last summer, last summer we did notice just like a little bit. I don't know mm-hmm. because for the time frame that we've lived in this home, we've mm-hmm. never had issues with moles mm-hmm. or um, chipmunks, mice, um, no. and she would always. Like hunt them, kill them, and mm-hmm. and sometimes she would come and show it to us. You know, she'd leave them I, as a little deposit on the front porch, just like, hey, look what Here's I did. Your present. Um, Be happy with but, me. But yeah, she was, she was great. And you're right; it's been a year, and so this is our first full season in spring and summer, coming off of a winter time where we have not had the scent, mm. probably, of her. You know. Around the property. I don't know, but it's time, I think. Well, no, by the way, I uh, uh, d- moles. I've had yeah. a mole in the back of the property here. So yeah. it's kind of like, and when I say back of the property, it's not like I have acreage. Right. It means that on our <laughs> our uh, suburban lot. Right. Uh, there's Which is about a half acre. But yes, there yeah. you go. So, um, so I wow. think it's time to maybe yeah. get another cat. Ugh. Ugh. And we're True. not ca- we're not cat people. Well, but we, we were, were gravy. We were gravy people. We were yes. gravy people. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, but the puzzle, yeah, that's still true. Um, I, I think I think my puzzle is more of how do they? I mean, obviously, I know the answer to this, but like we we've caught so many, mm-hmm. and yet so many are still here. Like they're like the population is not dwindling. It's like a whack a mole. It's like <laughs> they keep popping up, and there are more they under do. there. There they are do. more under there. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So I, I so ah. we'll, uh, folks. I, it's the good thing is we don't have a comment section on our <laughs> all major platforms that you find this because we'd have people chiming in. Oh my gosh! Now you can go to our Facebook page and yeah. chime in on. Now that would be funny is if someone were to put comments in on our Facebook page right. about chipmunks and other people who had not heard the podcast right. exactly. capture that. And so that would be funny. I feel like we've talked about chipmunks before on the podcast. Have we? I don't know. I think so. I feel like maybe you've mentioned it once or twice because they do really, um, it bothers you. We um, really should write so, our puzzles down. So, we, um, so I know, right? Because there's some things that continue to. Re, my favorite is the bag hanging in the tree next. And those folks that have listened to that episode mm-hmm. about the the grocery bag that mm-hmm. was hanging high in the tree next door, it is. It's been dislodged and it's gone now. Hallelujah! <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah! <laughs> hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you. The Teresa. answer to the puzzle. It's not really an answer. No, but folks out it's there, been, it's, yeah. been, it's probably so, been bothering some people. Yeah. If, yeah, if you were with us I'd way probably, back yeah. when, when that puzzle like, was shared. wonder what happened to the bag hanging That's right. in the tree across from That's David's right. office. And my puzzle, even from the last episode about the cicadas, 
will be solved here shortly because they're Ooh, yeah. they're getting ready to you know be done like, be done but um it's still the puzzle my it, it's funny because mm -hmm. um because yesterday which this is we're getting into our episode here um one of the couples that we have a great friendship with uh we met with them yesterday mm -hmm. and uh she and i were discussing cicadas because at their house they have a ton as well. Oh, and like the noise well they, is like yeah. deafening in the backyard. And you they know? have that wooded area by yes, the house. Yeah. But she also has known other people who are like, what? We don't have any, you know, at our place. And even today, um, mm -hmm. where we were, we had a, we had a little event. Mm -hmm. And while I was in line to get food, um, there was a guy there who in the discussion, not with me, but just in a discussion, I overheard him say, yeah, I don't have any cicadas at my house. And I'm just like, wow. see, the puzzle still exists. It does. Why are they some places I'm and hoping, not others? I'm hoping next episode, Ugh. the chipmunk puzzle no longer exists. <laughs> That's true. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe, hey, here's a question I have about the chipmunk. But once again, I wish we had a way for folks to chime in. If you can get a hold of us somehow, <laughs> let us know. Especially, okay, we have... Stuttgart, is that how you say that? Stutz Germany? Stuttgart? Oh, yeah. yeah. Stuttgart. Stuttgart. Yeah. We have a listener, listeners from there. Nice. That's someone from France nice. listening in. And Taiwan. We have Taiwan. And we have Welcome. from Africa. So here's the deal. Of everyone mm -hmm. that's outside of the United States where, where we're right. uh, broadcasting from, right. um, I, I don't think there are cicadas around the world, right? Uh, it, to this extent, the brood X. Oh, I don't know. I believe so, but I'm not certain. Well, we're I haven't really out. looked into it. We're but it would also the Mr. question. Google. The question would also be, um, what is the pest that puzzles you the most as to why why they're so prevalent? So for you, it's it's your chipmunk population here. Yeah, but yeah. wherever you are living, wherever you are from, what is? It's probably something different. The pest, right? Yeah, because so, I think it, like I remember when we went to Florida, we're really off the trail. By the way, <laughs> we went to Florida. It's those little little geckos or whatever they are. They're like mice. Oh yeah, man, they were. Yeah, everywhere. but hey, Teresa, maybe. Oh we, my we goodness. Really, we are twelve minutes in, and people are once again asking the question: Is this really a marriage podcast? You know what? I think we have held on to people just because um, they're so you, intrigued. Because they're waiting for you to sing. That's what they're waiting they are, for. Hey, I've already dropped two different you, songs you have. already. Well, let's let's so. move on to the subject at hand, and that was a good puzzle today, if I don't say so myself. And. <laughs> 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 okay, well done. Well, well thank done. You. I'm gonna be thank you. Thank you. Clapping in the background. Thank you. All right. Hey, we did have a fabulous time. Uh, shout out to our dear friends, Dave and Wendy. Mm -hmm. Dave and Wendy were married the exact same day as we were in yes. a different location. We did not know them at the time. No. And on June 12th, that's our anniversary. And, 1993. Uh, in 1993. It was the yes. same, same, same day, same year and everything. Not the same time. They were ahead of us by a few hours. That's right. So, so Dave and Wendy go. became friends of ours around 2000, 2001. 2001. And they have been fast. They were fast friends, and then they've been good friends ever since. It's mm -hmm. just a shout out um, as they hear this podcast as well. But that reminds us of the importance of friendship with other couples. Yes. That's been a high value for us our entire marriage, don't you think? Is it having, oh, yeah. having friendship? And it's come a little easier. Now, I remember challenging times yes. like for instance i as i'm kind of reminiscing even in my head right now is like thinking back when we were first married um we were in alliance ohio and i remember thinking that transition from college friendship mm -hmm. to young married out of college friendship that i remember it being a little challenge for us before we became friends with sure shout out doug and shelly Dave and Teresa. And Dave and Teresa. I mean, we can name <laughs> There's these There's another like, Dave and Teresa. It was Dave and Teresa, yes. that's right. And so anyhow, do, don't you think is that there was that little window where we right. we we were trying to establish ourselves and our college friends are gone uh, and thinking like, well, who it's do just we such connect a different, with? Right, because in college we're dating, we were engaged for that like last year, then we, you know, got married, but everybody graduates and goes on right they go and some of those friends that we had in college moved to different locations we mm -hmm. were in a different location you're in a new position you know um it just yeah there's just um 
it's that awkward kind of mm-hmm. time frame where mm-hmm. uh, it's just harder. And of course, if this is um, prior to, you know, a lot of connection through social media and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So like, you know, if you weren't calling someone on the phone or if you weren't, you know, uh, scheduling a, a weekend to go visit them or, mm-hmm. or something like that, like you really, or writing a letter to each other. I mean, yeah. like you really, you did not have the opportunity to um, just go out together because mm-hmm. of location and stuff. And so, so yeah, we, we had a little bit of a, of a hiccup there, but I think the, the interesting thing with like you and I is that mm-hmm. we've always um, been willing to be the pursuers Yes. And uh, yeah, so, that's a good, uh, um, yeah. so that is, uh, that is a challenge. And we know that this is a challenge with a lot of couples, um, just because when we coach couples and when we've done some of our events and retreats, we hear from others about, um, they, they really need other couple friendships mm-hmm. and, um, some of that onus is upon them because they have not tried to pursue other people. Yeah, and if you give me a nerd moment here, uh, we, as we work with couples, we do the prepare and rich assessment, mm-hmm. and um, just to let folks know that as we run the prepare rich, uh, pre- prepare and rich assessment, it there is a section in there that speaks about connection with family and friends, right? And there's a specific question that couples respond to about having friendships outside of their family or their relationship mm-hmm. directly. And I'd say that the vast majority, and that's once again, I need to look up it's kind of the hard stat on this, but what it, it has motivated us to deal with a subject more uh, often is that because we see more times than not that couples say we don't have really good friends mm-hmm. outside of our relationship. Right. But, but like I was saying, some of that propensity is um, just because they are not people that were that will pursue other people. And I think the difference for you and I is that both of our personalities Mm -hmm. uh, blend well together, but also both of us kind of, you know, pursue others. And Mm -hmm. that's what happened at that when we were early married and we found ourselves all of a sudden without a lot of friendships, you Mm -hmm. know, I mean, like we had, we'd had all those years in college and you were always surrounded by others Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we were just kind of on our own. And while, Mm -hmm. while it was nice to be on our own, we, we found ourselves needing more than just that. And so we we kind of began to pursue some other, other avenues. And and we hide the, the takeaway there is that we highly value friendship mm-hmm. right. with with other couples with other people right and not that other uh, others if you're listening is like well i value friendship but it's still a struggle it's like yeah and what we did with that value um is the key word that i heard you say is uh pursue mm-hmm. we we uh, pursued and sometimes it felt it felt like there there weren't a lot of folks to pursue I, and mm-hmm. i'm thinking about that time period sure. between college and our initial kind of couple friendships that we had mm-hmm. um and and if you're listening it could be our story was college but your story could be where well, you had these close friends in high school mm-hmm. and went into a work career um and and you got married and maybe those friendships aren't there the same way mm-hmm. as when when you're young and single right and so so to, to right. have those is and important. i and also to just um to just say to people that uh that was just one small snapshot of a time frame in our life and then you know we've had um we've had some moves mm-hmm. take place we've had some job changes take place and every time one of those transitions happened it uprooted us from somewhere and put us somewhere new we kind of had to start all over again yeah. so once again we had to pull back onto some of that pursuing mm-hmm. and just and, and it's scary. It is scary to do that. And I know for mm-hmm. some couples, it's kind of like, well, that's just not me because you get afraid to kind of just put yourself out there mm-hmm. because there may be other people that are like, well, I, you know, we're, we're good. We don't need any friends. And so you face that kind of fear of like mm-hmm. being rejected. And we certainly 
have been rejected by others. Yeah, yeah, I mean, things just don't have worked out. Yeah, uh, for some relationships. And then in the in the next vein, um, some of the ones who it worked out with early on, we were the youngest mm. by several years. They were already established in they their were relationship established, and families, right? Although um, those, uh, although there's, and we're going to touch upon this. There was some. Um, um, some some connecting points because we didn't yes. have children yet. They didn't right. have children, even though they were older. They, they didn't were have older children. than us, but they still and, hadn't. Started. And then the same thing right. happened with uh, when we major change. Mm-hmm. We moved to to Springfield. Right. And um, speaking of Dave and Wendy, mm-hmm. they were we we visited this church mm-hmm. and very first people, yep. very first person to come up to us to invite us to a small group was Wendy. Right. And so that was great to see. Hey, let's do this though. Mm-hmm. Is it, we actually, folks, we have five things. We actually have uh, something to talk about here. some <laughs> structure. And so th- there are five things that we want to share with you about the importance of friendship with other couples. And th- these are just five observances that we've had about why it's important to have other couple friendships right and, and you could come up with more we'd love to hear what those are and and you may want to even note those and you mm-hmm. may even if you whether you write them down or whether you just have them in your mind but these are the five that we kind of hold out as like this is why it's so important for you to have friendship with other couples and what we have discovered through those couple friendships and so um so yeah so the first one would be what uh, the first one is going to be accountability, mm-hmm. accountability. And basically um, having the friends that we have had in our life, um, those couples have helped provide accountability in so many different areas, whether it was um, early on, you know, when it was just, um, you know, how are you, how are you doing in your marriage? You know, how are you, um, how are you guys getting along? You know, are you finding, you know, the newlywed thing is working out, like what, you know, where are you at with things? It was also, um, you know, at different stages, it was also accountability with, um, just, uh, helping each other with like your parenting of just Mm. like, Hey, how you, how you guys doing, you know, um, as parents, Mm -hmm. um, how's your marriage, Mm -hmm. you know, are the kids, uh, driving a wedge or pulling you together, which one, you know, um, and so there was mm-hmm. accountability there. There's also been accountability with how mm-hmm. we're doing with our, uh, spiritual walk with, mm-hmm. you know, um, not, not, uh, not neglecting our time together as a couple, um, with that and mm-hmm. also individually so that we can be the best, um, for each other. So, yeah. Yeah. And to be able to, for that that role model, right? And yeah, a lot of it's right. a lot of it's unspoken, right? Yeah, it's kind of like right. so. If we talk, talking about parenting, is that I remember that our parenting was greatly impacted as a couple mm-hmm. to how we raised our children, because of the first was the modeling of another couple that we that right. were a little older than us, yes. but we became friends with, and we saw how they parented, mm-hmm. and then eventually we ended up asking them, say, like, "Hey, why do you parent this way? Because mm-hmm. it seems to be." pretty effective and right. we want that <laughs> right. and that's how we were introduced to growing kids international mm-hmm. so shout out to and folks you can google that and look it up growing kids international well, i think it's called growing families international oh i'm sorry yeah mm-hmm. growing families international mm-hmm. and uh google that and look it up it's it greatly impacted our parenting over mm-hmm. the years but we discovered that because of a couple friendship that held us accountable through not by I mean, this, these folks never came to us and said, hey, your kids are rotten. You need right. to do something about it. <laughs> they were more, it was it was friendship. And they right. modeled it and we wanted to be like them. And it held us accountable to a better standard yes. than what we would have held otherwise. Right. I also think of like, um, even financially, we, we found yes, right. Dave Ramsey and Financial Peace University through friendship. Right, exactly. That was another life stage that we were at. And we had... Um, we had entered into a small group and um, built some friendships there and we all kind of found ourselves like hey you know how do you how do you handle finances and what's going on and Dave Mm -hmm. Ramsey stuff was coming out and so we went through that together Mm -hmm. as a small group but it kind of also 
bonded us together as friends. Mm -hmm. And then just some of that accountability of, you know, yeah. how's your baby steps coming or, you know, whatever it was that yeah. we were uh, yeah. learning. That leads us to number two, mm -hmm. if we go there. Sure. Um, and that is, it kind of gives us, when you have friendship with other couples, it gives you outside perspective mm -hmm. from from what you have within your relationship. Now, we we encourage you, you're supposed to leave and cleave, right? right. Leave your parents, cleave to your spouse. Yes. Um, that's the idea, leave and cleave. And so there is an element where we need to be connected with one another. But um, in in so doing, you also allow others to speak into your relationship and give that outside perspective. So mm -hmm. not only accountability, number one, but then the, the other is to kind of like, wait a second, I, we, we as a couple never thought about that perspective. And you're allowing outside perspective, a little bit of diversity. And so especially if you're making friends with folks that are outside of w your background and experience, um, and that's the beauty too of like, I know many of you uh, who are listening are living in an area, you're, you're married today and you're living in an area that you weren't born and raised. Right. And because of job, college, job, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, so you're in an area that's different. And so allowing outside perspective coming into into your life that would mm -hmm. help sharpen you um, and to expand uh, who you are. Right. And we can even give shout out a shout back to our example of finances and child rearing as part of that, right? Right, exactly. And yeah, well, you know, we kind of get into our own little box of what what our marriage is, what our perspective is. Lots of times you marry someone with similar um, perspective as you, um, but having those other influences through other couples not even necessarily that they would inf influence you to sway you to their side, but it does just kind of like, like you said, it can sharpen you as a person on truly, you know, what, what are your beliefs, convictions, mm -hmm. you know, morals, like whatever it is like that. It's just, you know, as iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. So, so it does, it, it does help to just kind of like have, have some friends that may share a different perspective because once again, we all come from different families of origin mm -hmm. and then you get to know someone else and you're like, wow, like that's a, that was a completely different way to grow up than I did, you know, but it helps and it helps to remind you that, you know, the world is a large place. There's lots of different people <laughs> yeah. within the world. So don't just only, stay within your box and only have friendship with couples who are just like yourself because that's so boring. <laughs> yeah. And we, we've had, we've had couple friends that we have uh, not agreed necessarily with one thing or the other, or oh, we, sure. or it came from a different angle or right. um, uh, something from us. And, and let's list them now. Let's <laughs> tell, <laughs> No, we're Let's not say going to list all of the ones, right? Everyone that we ever right. weren't on the same page with, but right. we will say that um, I think we're better for it that we've for those friends that we've kind of kept the long haul. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, sure. and we're going to hit upon this in a bit, is it? Um, sometimes you know, friendships are 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 almost always built upon common experiences and right. common life stage, right? So right. It, it's difficult to carry on friendships from people that are too different from you. Correct. That, that, that so different that it's kind of like, oh, I really, we really don't are butting heads right. on this, which is totally fine. And now, and there is a place for short term. Yeah. I was going to say there's seasons and, and of friendships. And folks, right? listen, you, you aren't going to change. You aren't going to exchange your spouse in. Keep right. your spouse for life yeah. <laughs> and work through challenges. Yes. You should, with friendship, work through as many challenges as you can. But we have permission mm -hmm. with friendship to have seasonal friends. Right. And, and, and it doesn't have to end ugly. It doesn't have to end with, um, like, oh, I just don't like them anymore. Mm -hmm. It's more of like, no, you know, during this season of my life, this time, we were friends, and now we're not anymore. We're not... 
we don't run together anymore and that's absolutely right. fine or yeah. we just have we're just different you wouldn't share that with people necessarily it's like but come have a peace my friends with saying you know that was for a season that was for and a that's season. okay we yeah. don't have any ill will toward yeah. those folks we just had a seasonal friendship which right. was very important and so don't be afraid to seek right. those out, especially <laughs> to be influenced, um, have outside perspective from where you are. All right. And I'm laughing because I think that um, we may have been that for some other people. We gave such a different perspective mm. to someone else that they kind of ended the friendship or kind of like moved on, mm -hmm. which was fine. You know, so it may not always be you as a couple doing the moving mm -hmm. on, but it may be someone else just because they couldn't yeah. really mesh or handle maybe your perspective. Yeah. And that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's right. Okay. That's right. So how about number three here? Our third reason that we want to share with people is, you know, having friendship with other couples helps provide, um, helps give you an opportunity to provide care for others. I love this one. Yeah. So being able to care for other people, right? Find ways to serve them, right? I mm -hmm. mean, have have friendship with other couples so that you can serve them. You can build up their marriage and their family. Um, look out for some of their interests mm -hmm. and, and things. And that can, goodness, that can go on such a, a deep level and such a, just kind of a, a shallow level even. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like I... <laughs> I remember um, um, it was how we just have, we have so many um, friendships that we built out of our time when we were living in Springfield. But I remember specifically um, Kyle and Katrine mm -hmm. and great, um, folks. Uh, great folks. But I remember Katrine calling you out of the blue. I mean, like this was years ago, right? And she knew that you had an interest and a love with coffee. <laughs> and an espresso <laughs> especially right. and right. and there was an espresso machine was it an espresso yeah yeah espresso there was an machine. espresso machine that her mom was going to be getting rid of and just out of the blue she calls you and says hey david like you know would you want to just yeah. take my mom's old machine off her hands or whatever and you were like yeah and it's like that that was such a way of yep. caring for yeah. another person that we had built a friendship with them. Mm -hmm. We'd gotten to know each other. They knew some of our interests. We knew theirs. And then just like, that that's such like a, a mm -hmm. superficial kind of like thing, right? Yes Where, and no, but, right? But, I, yeah, but that's what I was going to say is it spoke volumes mm -hmm. to us to realize that someone was thinking about us yeah. as a... When we're not around. When we're not around. And just randomly in the day oh, yeah. oh hey you know what there's an i i bet you david and teresa would like to have that david <laughs> talks about this all the time when when we've been together and so call and the crazy thing mm -hmm. we still have that 15 machine. 15 plus years at later. least it's, at least 15 plus we years still, i still use it i know i still use it so yeah so that thank is, you thank you katrine that's even just now. a that's just that that's like a a small shallow example mm -hmm. to one extent and deeper example to another of just the impact that other couples can have on others when they care for them, serve them, look out for their interests. You've got to have people outside of your marriage that you care about, mm -hmm. take care of, look after, mm -hmm. think about when they're not around. Right. Consider as a couple how you can care. I mean, the easy one, that's a great example. I'm so glad you told that story. And other example, easy ones would be like when when your friend has a baby, you take a yeah. meal over. Yes. Or or you um or you sit with a with a another couple when they've lost a parent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've had to do that one. Or <laughs> lost a child. Um, and we had some of our friends sat with us when mm -hmm. I lost dad, you know. Yeah, that's so right. I mean that was yeah. yeah, these So these are dear friends. But but my friends, when you lack someone to love and care for mm -hmm. outside of your marriage, then your marriage risk growing cold mm -hmm. and self centered mm -hmm. and self absorbed. Right. And a marriage that is self centered and self absorbed will eventually uh, fall in on itself. Yes. 
It'll right. fall into itself because you won't, you, and you won't be happy. You, you'll chase happiness to no avail because you'll try to find it in so many areas that just serve self. Mm-hmm. And we've walked with couples, we've coached couples that are very self-absorbed. Yeah, and it's, so inward. It's mostly focused on things yes. rather than yeah. people. And it's, and it's such a foreign concept to many of these couples that fall into that trap. It's a foreign concept to think outside of themselves and to care for others. You've got to have people that you are caring for. Mm -hmm. So when you have, uh, so we want to encourage have friendship and have friends that you really can take, take and invest in Mm -hmm. and love. Right. You love them right where they're at. We, I tell you, we will bring up Dave and Wendy again. We Mm -hmm. love hanging out with them. Um, and and uh, talking with them, and they're at a distance now. We live separate uh, in different. We moved to a different community than them, right. but we love hanging out with them this day because we we really love them, and they love us. We believe because mm-hmm. they they show that. Which leads into number four, <laughs> right? So the yes. fourth reason that you need to have friendship with other couples is is, be- is because it's f- fun. It's fun. and laughter and sharing life together, right? So you got to have other couples that you can laugh with. You got to have other couples that you share life with. It builds vitality within the relationship. Mm-hmm. And so so every year for several years now, we celebrate our anniversary date with Dave and Wendy. Sometimes it happens on the actual anniversary date, June mm-hmm. 12th. Sometimes it's just a week later, week before. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's been in July. So it's like, mm-hmm. but we, but we, we set up a time where we're going to be, you know, doing an activity, mm-hmm. eating out, whatever it is together with them. And, and so when we, when we had this opportunity last night to actually uh, have that time together, um, we had some good laughs and oh my goodness, I which just, is so great. You've got to have you. And, and here's the, to, to the blessing to your marriage. Mm-hmm. You are l- laughing, sharing life. You're having a good time with other, with other couples. Uh, that adds to your marriage in itself because it's a shared experience right. outside of yourself. So the benefit of having couple friendships is you, you enjoy life more. Right. Now we've said this for some time is that we we um, we have this great privilege in life to embrace joy, uh, happiness, mm-hmm. um, enjoyment, uh, pleasure, right? Right. And so to, to enjoy the pleasurable things of life. Now, now from us, from a from a Christian perspective, we would say that having a kind of a, a God view of when we suffer, and then have a God view way of when we ha- when there's pleasure, opportunities for pleasure, right. for godly pleasure. Mm-hmm. And for us, we would throw friendship with other couples and laughing and sharing life together. Mm-hmm. That's in a godly kind of pleasure center, right? right? That's where God is honored through those friendships and when you can laugh together and have a good time together. And so we would encourage you um, to have those type of friendships. Right. And... Um, not being afraid to know each other so well, um, which deepens the relationship and then allows for laughing at yourself. Yes. So, you know, it's good to laugh about things, but there are, there are many times where you are, you are the reason Mm -hmm. that the laughter is happening because you're willing to like, let yourself be vulnerable with people. And then, when a mistake or I don't know, just a funny story comes about or just mm-hmm. something that they kind of want to like, you know, joke about with you. Um, it, it's okay. Cause we're by no means meaning have friendship with other couples who just mock you like mm-hmm. the whole time. <laughs> like that's, that's not what we're saying, but mm-hmm. yeah, laugh together, share life together. So, so good. And the final one would be uh, the benefit that mm-hmm. friendship has for your partner. So if you Mm -hmm. consider, yes, it's good for you as a couple, and we've gone through the first four centered on you as a couple, but if you personally consider that when you as a couple have good friends, friends, couples, Mm -hmm. friendship with other couples, it's good for your spouse. And our objective, one of our primary objectives as a one another couple is to pull the best out of your your partner, Mm -hmm. out of your spouse. And one of the best ways to... um, 
strategies to do so would be to have other couple friendships. It's good for your your spouse and partner to have um, friendships going on outside of your relationship. Right. Yeah. That is an awesome one. So, all right. So let's uh, recap the five. Um, and then we're going to have a closing as well on that. But uh, the five reasons that we feel are some of our most important reasons to have friendship with other couple. Number one, it helps give accountability. Um, number two, it helps uh, to provide a different perspective. Um, finding those people who um, are, are outside of your box just a little bit uh, gives some balance. Uh, number three, it's a great opportunity to care for others, serve them, um, look out for their interests. The fourth reason would be because you want to laugh and be able to share life with each other. Um, laugh together, uh, build, builds vitality within your relationship. And the fifth reason would be because it is actually a benefit to your own spouse when you have friendship with other couples. It's good for them, helps, the, helps your spouse to feel sharpened and spoken mm -hmm. into at times when they need to hear from others as well. You may be longing for friendship, but your your spouse is not. And so it makes it more difficult for you to do so. And we, we just encourage you to continue because there, we, we know there are times and we really don't have a lot of, a lot of time left to dive into this. Mm -hmm. But the idea that, well, what if, what if I really get along with, um, with one, but, mm -hmm. but my, hu my husband or my wife does not get along with right. their husband or wife or whatever. And it's not mutual. Cause the whole joke with guys, by right. the way, honey, is, is, you know, and you know, this is that, right. you know, the two uh, wives get along really well and the husbands are just kind of stand there like yeah. they have nothing in common. And guys are a little, have a little bit more of a challenge to uh, build friendship with people that they really don't. They're just kind of being drug along on right. the date. So we really want to encourage you to find those where you could really truly have good friendships mm -hmm. where all four of you get along well. Right. But it, but with that being that that's something that we may have to dive into a future episode uh, more uh, mm -hmm. more fully. Right. So, so the question that we always get then is like, you know, we don't have, uh, we don't have friends with other couples. Um, and we just don't know how to go about that or where do we find them? And so, um, we were just going to give some suggestions of what's worked for us over mm -hmm. the years. And so some of our best friendships over the, over the ages and stages of life that we've had together is because we were sharing the same life stage that mm -hmm. we were in. So early on, we found couples who, yes, they were slightly older than us, but they also didn't have children yet. We didn't have children yet. We were brand new married. And so we were kind of at that same life stage of just prior to parenting, mm -hmm. prior to parenthood, right? Mm -hmm. um, another area that we've we've usually found good friends is through our church community because that's mm -hmm. an area that we have always had in our relationship in our life. And because of that, we've had some great friendships come out of some small groups that we've been a part of um, and different things. And connected to that would be mutual interest, like maybe it'd be easier for you or through through church. Uh, some churches have where you can have mutual interest within the church community, but also whether it's inside or outside of the church, clubs, hobbies, mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's a book club or running club. Um, but right. that's also connected to your neighborhood. You may yes. be able to find wonderful friendships within your own neighborhood, your neighbor, sure. your cul-de-sac, your, mm -hmm. your community, your homeowners association. Maybe there is a a, a way of forming those friendships mm -hmm. and you have common connections in that way. Right. And then finally, another area um, that many people find friendships is within their own family structure. So mm -hmm. you may have siblings who are married that are, you know, similar ages as you. Um, you may have, we, we know several couples who, who are good friends with cousins you know, um, maybe like the two guys were the cousins and then they've gotten married and then, you know, those four hang out together. So, so your family structure may also provide some good opportunity for friendship as well. Ultimately, we know that friendship takes work, right? It takes an extra, it takes effort to be a good friend and to become better as time goes relationally with one another and and realize that you'll get better at this no one no one's kind of stuck they don't have to be stuck in their relational ability and so even some of the 
principles, concepts, tools that we teach mm-hmm. couples apply to friendship. In fact, we've had people say that to us before. They say, you know what, this would be really good just in the workplace or with my Absolutely. friend or with parenting. Well, that's another one. Co-workers, co-workers or fellow employees. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, so exercise healthy relationships. Be a good friend, and you'll find good friends. Exactly. That's it, in, in most cases, it works out uh, that way. We, before we go to the verse of the week, though, I, I, I want us to just give a shout out to our friends, to, to those <laughs> that we've been friends with. Right, hon? Yes. We've had some very good friends. We've, we mentioned, we've mentioned by name a couple of those friendships, but we could go through a whole list of people that have been seasonal friends mm-hmm. and also those that are lifelong friends mm-hmm. that even we haven't seen them in a year, but we can pick up right now with them. So right. shout out to all of our friends from the places that we have been. Primarily and, uh, where we've lived in different stages. but We yeah. are richer for it. Yes, absolutely. And we thank you for being friends with us and tolerating us. <laughs> <laughs> so our verse yeah. of the week is what? The verse of the week comes out of Proverbs. Proverbs eleven twenty five says, Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Mm. And I think that's a great verse to speak into friendship. And, that's right. Um, and with yourself. That's right. Hey, folks, we are so grateful that you joined us today. We want to give one more shout out and request before we uh, close up shop today. And that is here soon, we're going to start a new segment on our podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, it'll happen in the next few weeks here. The new segment will be uh, a segment dedicated to answering your questions and covering certain topics that you request. So what we're going to ask is right now, the easiest way to connect with us is through Facebook. Mm-hmm. We'll put a uh, request out on Facebook, find that that post. Um, you can also get a hold of us at info at oneanothermarriage.org. Correct. If you want to email us. Yep, you can email us there as well. But we really are open to your um, you know, thoughts, questions. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll try to answer kind of a mailbag kind of section mm-hmm. where um, we'll give shout outs. And who knows, maybe in the future we'll try to um, get some prizes or some yeah. some thank you True. gifts to yeah. folks who who participate right. with us. Right. So thank you so much for joining us for this episode. We hope that, um, that it will uh, give meaning to not only your marriage, but also to those that are around you and that you impact. And um, we look forward to sharing with you next week. And before we go, a quick shout out to all of the dads because we're coming up. Um, oh, well, well, we just did. We just yeah, had. just did uh, Father's Day. But a quick shout out again to all of our dads who are listening. Hope you all had a good um, Father's hope Day. Hope you had a wonderful Father's Day and That's a happy right. Father's Day um, had by all. That's right. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, mm-hmm. um, rate, review, rate, review on your favorite platform. Thanks for joining us, folks. Mm-hmm. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.